Well, it was a particularly spirited question period as leaders did battle over the veteran snub and reacted to the death of the liberal senator, at least in title. Here are the sounds of battle over a CTV story where a veteran's family was ordered to pay back her monthly disability check after she committed suicide while suffering post-traumatic stress disorder. Can the Prime Minister of overwhelming support explain why the Conservative government wrote to the family of a veteran who took her own life on Christmas Day, demanding that they repay her benefits because she died before the end of the month. How could this happen? I'm glad that the uh, leader of the opposition raises that question because, of course, it is unacceptable. And as soon as the minister heard about that, he immediately said it was unacceptable in order to change. And that's the kind of, that's the kind of work we get from this minister. That's what you get from that minister after that minister has asked the family to repay the benefits. The first thing that comes to their mind is ask for the money back, not help the veterans. Well, our Tuesday turned Wednesday panel of MPs are here live and in person for the first time in 2014. Conservative James Rajat is chair of the prestigious Finance Committee. Megan Leslie is the deputy leader of the NDP. Roger Kuzner is a Liberal MP who can cross Liberal Senator appointment off his bucket list as of today. <laughs> Welcome to you all. There'll be a Senate Liberal appointment. <laughs> Senate liberal appointment. <laughs> Okay, a sad story uh, on this, uh, on the, what's going on in veterans affairs. R Roger, you were uh, pretty worked up in question period today. I'm, I guess I'm trying to get a sense of what's going on because the, I don't see, you don't see veterans this outraged very often. And then you have this horrible story of a, of a family who suffered a suicide being asked for 561 bucks back. Does it make sense to you? Have you figured out why this is happening? Yeah, it's been a, a real tough week for the minister uh, on this, and, and obviously the um, the tragedy, the the loss of life is a is an obvious tragedy, and, and you you don't expect um, you know the minister to, to to watch over every uh, piece of correspondence that leaves Veterans Affairs, and we know that there are you know within the bureaucracy mistakes are, are made uh, he did respond to it uh, as quickly as he could but uh, you know I think it speaks to a a, a bigger problem that uh, you know things aren't that tight within the uh, within the department but the you know the the, the, the snub of the veterans um, you know it was a group of veterans that wanted to meet with the Minister of Veterans Affairs about a veteran affair and uh, you know, with with what took place last night, I, I thought that was really unfortunate. But the, the the issue is, Don, is that nine offices are closing. Seventeen uh, people that provided services to veterans uh, are now being replaced by somebody within Service Canada that would have had a little bit of training. It, it, it's just not a level of service that our veterans deserve. Yeah. You know, the, the, the young guys, if if they think the veterans are gone after the Second World War and Korean veterans go. Our younger veterans are coming home, and they're, they're, they have more challenges now, I would argue, with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, it's even uh, a far greater demand. So uh, I, I right. think it's tragic that they're closing these offices. We're going to speak to the veterans uh, after uh, the next break. But, Megan, um, I mean, they're closing in your area as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I'm trying to figure out how eight offices is such an important part of the cost-cutting agenda that we're going to infuriate veterans in such a like, cross Canada way. I mean, it's Yeah, I don't know who did the uh, political calculation on this being a good idea because how much money are we saving and to what end, uh, to what cost. Um, that does relate back to this, this issue of Veterans Affairs asking for the $500 back um, from this family. I, I get that mistakes are made. And also, I, I, I know a lot of civil servants, right? And, and they're working to do the best job that they can. But when you are working under a government, that, that this is the problem, is the culture that ensures that there's a culture of this extreme penny pinching at the expense of common sense, right? At the expense, sometimes, of people's lives, at the expense of the, the just thing to do, yeah. right? I mean, how much money was spent doing all the filing just to come up with that number? Uh, so I don't blame the person who sent that letter out, but the, it's this culture that's been created at Veterans Affairs and other departments um, across the government where it's, it's find that penny to the expense of what really matters. James, I don't understand what's going on in that department. Maybe you have some insight. 
Well, I, I think like both of my colleagues have said, I mean, uh, the officials are doing the best job they can, but this was something that should not have happened. As soon as the minister found out about it, he stepped in and, and said that this will not be happening. So I think, frankly, there was ministerial oversight as soon as he became aware of it.